Smite has been one of my favorite skills for a long time, but usually I have to play it on extremely clunky builds. I finally found a non-clunky build to play it on, and the new Smite of Divine Judgment is absolutely amazing. So amazing that I don't even think it's in the same galaxy as regular Smite. The main differences are it comes with a built-in two extra targets, so basically Ancestral Call Baseline, but more importantly, quality adds auto-targeting range. Normal Smite has 5M, which is pretty good, but 23 quality, we're looking at 7.3M, which is basically off the monitor on the top and bottom of the screen and to the edge of the screen on the left and right. And then if you scale some AOE, it'll actually hit off the screen on the left and right with a melee skill. Oh, and it also applies a more damage multiplier to the area component. I think this is hands down my new favorite build because it features scaling that just makes sense. You're just stacking tons and tons of strength and that scales both your survivability and also makes your damage go crazy high. Now, if you look around POE Ninja, you'll find people competing for the highest damage possible using Reeve. But actually, this new Smite outperforms Reeve because if you're positioned appropriately for single target, you get a melee hit and an AOE hit. Those combination of numbers together just don't show up on PoE Ninja DPS, but it does outperform it. There are possible ways to configure this build to do more damage than I have here for sure, such as stacking four all attributes, eight strength, 35% increase, effective passive jewels, and cutting out all the life nodes, but I chose to pick up extra armor, max life, and spell suppression. Because this league had a lot to do with item quantity and rarity and loot explosions, I configured this setup such that I have 163 IIR and 9% IIQ, which actually makes a noticeable difference in loot when high wisp abyss farming is in play. The POB for this setup I am demoing here and a budget non-original sin version are both included in the description of the video, so check both those out. Before we get too much into the build, let's refresh how attack-based strength stackers work. We have Replica Elberon Boots, which gives us chaos damage per strength. We grab Iron Will, which lets strength also apply to spell damage. We then use Iron Fortress Chest Piece, which gives us 3% increase per 10 strength instead of 1% for 5 strength. It also gives us block per strength, which allows us to get block cap really easily. Since we are block cap, we don't really need evasion. We use Battle Mage's Cry to convert all the spell damage into generic attack damage scaling for our chaos damage. Because Battle Mage's Cry scales with Battle Cry effect, we walk away with an additional 2.1 times spell damage scaling. Now you might be worried about having to maintain the uptime of the War Cry, but we grab the instant node, put it on left click, and then it auto triggers for us. You also need to make sure that you have whatever skill you're using attached to multi-strike because otherwise it will use all the exertion charges and then the war cry will fall off before you can refresh it but multi-strike makes that not happen in a high-end version of this build like this we have original sin which allows us to use a flat cold damage helm and also a strength stacking sword or mace that gives fire damage per strength Normally, we cannot add non-cast damage because of the line of text on Replica Elberons that states that you cannot deal non-cast damage. Now, Berserkers are especially good because you have the option to pick up a Forbidden Flesh and a Forbidden Flame for Undeniable, which gives you two times your strength and flat accuracy and attack speed for accuracy. Now, our Helm already gives us strength per accuracy, so we end up getting three times our strength as accuracy. This allows a whole nother dimension of scaling with the build. It also makes our leap slam incredibly fast, which makes the build feel really, really smooth. Even without Undeniable, Berserker is already an incredibly strong ascendancy because it gives 40% more attack speed from bliss charges, 40% more damage, and a reliable way to generate rage. In the past, you would grab Warbringer, which would top out a rage when we're below 25, but it is the downside of losing 10 rage if you're above 25. With a new introduction to charms and the that which was taken jewel, we can get the upside of this node without the downside, allowing us to pick up Crave the Slaughter. Crave the Slaughter gives us about 3.3 rage per second, 
and when combined with the full rage, if below 25, gives us very high uptime on Berserk. Strength stackers are extremely good this league because of charms. You can get 8% increased strength times three just from the charms, allowing you to hit strength numbers never before possible. You also can get a lot of utility in the build in the form of these charms. I like to go with Fortify on hit and Insta Leech, but you could choose whatever you want, such as increasing your block cap, now I want to direct your attention to what I'm actually doing right here, which I'm running the super uh, popular strategy here where we're basically abyss farming. So in case you've been living under a rock or have heard it and just don't understand how it works, basically we're using a gilded breach scarab so that we guarantee the tower and then the tower will shoot off periodically at certain life percentages projectiles that spawn a ton of rares. Now, what we do is we basically roll our maps for plus two projectiles. That gets multiplied by our atlas, so it becomes three projectiles, and then we get way more rares than we have any business of ever having. Now, the cornerstone to this really actually is how you do the forest. Very, very important. But anytime you're getting really high wisps in that forest then, it basically starts possessing a ton of rares and increasing loots and giving them extra drops. And then that's how we're getting absurd amounts of loot like you're seeing on the screen right now. So what did I get there? Like two Valdos and several divines, just like raw divine drops. But this is pretty much like every map you're going to get like a Valdos and a divine or two if you can actually push your whiffs to uh, like 6k plus which there's tons of videos out there about how to do that. Now, um, there's other strategies that you can do that don't involve the Wisp, such as what I did at the start of the league. So I did a breach strategy at the start of the league, basically like Cheyula breaches. And that one yielded almost an entire Cheyula breach stone every single map. And Cheyula breach stones in bulk are about one divine right now. So you can pair that with something like maybe Ritual, because Ritual has a bunch of the fragments in it for the Uber Ziri. So you're basically become a feeder of someone who's running the feared, which is very, very profitable still to this point, because even like the Shaper weapon is worth 40 something defines right now. So just feeding that could be a good strategy. Always look at what other people are farming and you can always do a different strategy to just feed whatever the heck we are doing. For running Cat Hunter, be careful not to kill the Spire too quickly. If the projectiles are still in the air and then it dies and the rares don't come out, they'll just disappear. Now, I'm not going to bore you and loot this whole map, but so far in this map, I've gotten five Valdos and six Divines. Pretty freaking wild.